Hello and welcome to Physics 111. My name is Professor Ryan Trainer. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm really excited that you're in this course. So some of you are probably also excited to be in this course. Some of you might be a little bit anxious, and some of you really might not know what this course is about or even what physics is about. So whenever I have a question like that, I like to turn to Google. And if you ask Google what physics is, it will have all sorts of suggestions for you some of which are honestly a little bit confusing and I don't really know what they mean. But I want to focus on just a couple of these. I see this one, physics is life, physics is the study of matter and energy, and let me tell you, this is really how I see physics. Not that physics has to be your entire life, but what I hope for you is that you will see physics in your everyday life as you go through this course and after you complete it. What do I mean by that? Well, let me tell you that I'm a huge fan of the LA Dodgers, and when I watch the Dodgers play baseball, I see a lot of physics. For example, here I see Cody Bellinger making a force against the ground, which then pushes against his foot. That allows him to turn his body to exert a torque that swings his body around. I see this baseball flying in with some velocity and some momentum that then meets his bat with momentum headed in the other direction. I see an impulse occur, the transfer of kinetic energy, and I see a ball fly off into the air, hopefully landing somewhere out in the stands. So I'm not necessarily trying to turn all of you into LA Dodgers fans, and I'm certainly not trying to ruin your ability to just enjoy a game of baseball. But I do hope that when you finish this course, you will have this ability to kind of see the physical interactions that are going on that determine so many of the kind of things that we see in our everyday lives. Another goal for you that I have in this course is to be able to solve problems. And that means not just to see the physics, but to take quantitative data and reach conclusions based on that data. So for example, if I return to this moment in time, and I told you that this ball here is moving in this direction with a velocity equal to 180 kilometers per hour at an angle 43 degrees above the horizontal, after you finish this course, I might be able to ask you certain questions about that situation, such as how much energy does this baseball have? How far will the baseball travel? What seat should you sit in if you wanted to catch it? And maybe even given the blurriness of the ball that we see in this photo, what was the shutter speed of the camera used to take this picture? Now, I don't expect you to be able to answer all those things at the moment, but these are the kinds of quantitative questions we want to be able to answer using our knowledge of physics as well as of the physical world. One other goal that I have for you is to develop intuition about the physical world through experimentation. Some of that is going to occur during our lab course, but also through things that we do in class, even including the first day of class. The idea is that in many cases, we can look at a physical situation and know what's going to happen even before we see anything happen. If I throw something up into the air, you can probably tell me what's going to happen to it soon after it leaves my hand. And so I want to expand your ability to make those kinds of qualitative predictions and use them to guide you as you work through problems or just think about what's going to happen in everyday situations. Okay, so those are some of my goals for you. Let's go back to these ideas about what physics is for just one more moment. A few of the other suggestions here are a little bit less exciting. For example, physics is hard. Physics is math, applied math, just applied math. These might be things that you feel and think about physics as well. And I want to tell you that some of you I know might be thinking that you are not a physics person or a math person. And those are terms I hear a lot. And I have to tell you that I personally think that they are way overrated. Now, in contrast, there are certain skills in life that I believe you really do need <clears throat> a certain level of just unique genetics as well as practice in order to get really good at. So I can never, I've never been able, I should say, to dunk a basketball and I have put a lot of time into trying to learn how to do so. Whereas LeBron James has this ability based on some elements of his genetics and his physical body in addition to the time that he's put into that. Now, I don't need to dunk a ball like LeBron does, and I don't need you to do physics at a professional level. What I do want you to think about is not to treat physics as like dunking a basketball, as this kind of unique and, and really challenging skill, but rather as something like riding a bike. That may be something that you already know how to do, or it may not be able to, but many, many people are able to learn how to ride a bike well enough to get around town and do the things that they need to do and use it as a tool in their lives. That's how I believe you can learn to use physics in this case. 
And if you can learn to, you know, love physics and decide to go pro in physics, by all means, that's really exciting. But if you just learn to do physics well enough to accomplish your goals for this class in your later career, that meets my goals as well. And I'm 100% sure that each of you can do that in this course. And I'm also sure that I'm going to be here to help you through it. Can't wait to meet you soon.